Yo, we shooting in Brooklyn warehouses. Y'all ever notice how it like in warehouses they got like bats and shit just like in the hall? Oh shit! Oh snap! What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I thought I'd share another Blender and After Effects visual effects walkthrough of the shot that we have created for our SpiderFi add-on for Blender promo. If you guys missed it, we have updated our SpiderFi Void System add-on for Blender to Blender 4.0. So if you have that add-on, be sure to download that free update on Blender Market. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Anyways guys, this is the shot that I'm going to be breaking down today. And I have done the final visual effects composite inside of After Effects, but I'll also show you the general scene setup inside of Blender for how I actually rendered out those bats. But first and foremost, guys, I wanna give a shout out to my actor and producer friend, Aaron Dallavilla. Aaron's a really talented actor and he was kind enough to take some of his time when he wasn't shooting to make this video for us so that we could then add these bats in post-production. So check out his page if you like. He has some really great parody and music content on his channel as well, so I'll put a link Link to that in the description below. Anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get started with this shot walkthrough. As you can see, this is our like, shot from the very beginning. It's a pretty simple composite here. And I thought it was fairly seamless how it was all integrated together. So I'll just go through the layers that we have added to create this shot one by one here. The first thing that I did, of course, was import our live action footage inside of Blender. So as you can see here, I just have our camera here. I've just imported our footage into our scene. And then I've just generally recreated the environment with three cubes here to kind of create where the batch would come out of this kind of back corner of the building. So you can see if I go into solid view, I've just generally recreated the geometry of that area. And I've made this environment geometry enabled as a holdout so that any elements that we add to the scene that are behind this geometry will be hidden by it if they are behind the camera at any given frame. So that's what I've done here. I've just recreated that basic environment after blocking out this reconstruction. I then added a collection of vampire bats as well as Australian bats to our scene with the SpiderFi add-on. So I've just checked those two checkboxes here and created a goal for this bat system as well. And as you can see here, if I just enable this, and as you can see, I've just placed the bat emitter in the back corner so that they come out right toward the camera during the shot. So you can see I have the emitter here in the corner and then I have the goal for the bats right here. And I've also made our environment recreation in its own collection so that in the particle settings for our bat system, I've actually told the bats, as you can see here, to avoid this specific geometry here. So as you can see here, by changing that setting, I could then bake the bats and they'll actually avoid all three of our objects here, which is going to obviously make it much more realistic because the particle simulation is taking into account this environment geometry that we have recreated in a more realistic way. So it's just giving the bat render some environmental interaction. As you can see, if I go into rendered view, this is what our bat system looks like. And you can see that when we go above the geometry, the cube here is acting as a holdout so that you know the bats stay hidden if they are behind this geometry. You can see if we go into camera view, this is what we're getting straight out of Blender. And just from looking at this example right here, you can tell that a lot of the work and the tweaking for the shot was done in the compositing process because we had to blend these bats into the scene fairly nicely, add a lot of motion blur, a lot of flaring, and uh, you know lift the if you look at the shadow levels of the back corner here, the bats are much darker. So I've done a lot of work in the compositing process to blend these bats into the scene, which is what we'll get into next inside of After Effects. But this is the general idea inside of Blender. I've just used a very basic bat system from SpiderFi. I've added a goal for the bats to follow. Then I've recreated our environment and told the bats to avoid that environment. And then to give our bats some realistic lighting, I've added a very basic HDRI just to give them kind of some global illumination. But as you can see here, the lighting in the shot is fairly soft. You can see we have a cloudy day outside. So I was able to get away with a very basic HDRI to light these bats fairly effectively. So that's what I've done here. Also, in addition to rendering these out as a PNG sequence, I've also rendered out a closer version of these bats. I actually have another version here called Close Up Bats. And it's actually just the exact same setup. I've just moved the camera to have another element here of these bats flying in the foreground. And of course, I've retimed these bats inside of After Effects to make everything more integrated. And you'll also notice that I'm not doing any camera tracking inside of Blender. All of the tracking was done in a 2D way inside of After Effects. So I've just rendered out both of these bat sequences as PNG sequences with alpha channels and got into After Effects for most of the work, which was in the compositing process. 
All right, guys, here we are inside of After Effects. I'll go ahead and go through the layers one by one here, but this was our final composite. The first thing that I did for the shot was create the very simple top and bottom graphic. So super basic graphics here. I've just used some white solids, nothing crazy. Couple solids here, masked out. I've added his name, of course, and then on the bottom here, also his name with a little follow button. So super basic solid editing, guys, with some masks added a little blue check mark to make it official. Then of course I have a little magenta button up here with a live logo to make it seem like he was going live on a no name social media platform. As you can see, the white and bottom solid here, they have a slight bit of opacity here. I've lowered the opacity a little bit so that was a little bit see-through, but nothing too crazy here. Then I've, uh, you know, added a little profile picture here. And uh, yeah, so pretty basic little setup for the actual, you know, graphics and everything. Now, since we didn't track our shot in Blender, I did have to track our shot inside of After Effects, and that's what all of these different null objects here at the bottom are for. And the reason there are multiple versions is because, as you can see, our camera actually panned throughout space. So I start tracking one point of contrast, and then when that point of contrast leaves frame, I then have to track another point of contrast in our shot, and then apply that tracking data to multiple null objects, and then link it all together. I hope that makes sense. If you don't understand what I mean by that, I'll put a link to null object tracking inside of After Effects within the description below, but that's the reason for our multiple null objects here, just so we could track our footage. As you can see, I think null one was the main track. You can see null number one right here is just tracked on our shot. So it doesn't move as we kind of scroll through our scene here. So that's the point that we have tracked all of our other elements to within the scene so that as the camera moves around, those elements don't move around with it. And in this specific case, I didn't really need a 3D camera track of the scene since the camera movement was so erratic and it was also not really moving throughout 3D space. It was really just mostly him panning and tilting around to see everything. So I didn't really feel the need to do an advanced track. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you feel like it wasn't believable, but uh, I thought it works pretty good. And I you can see if I scroll through the scene here, the null feels pretty integrated into the scene. So that's what all those guys are for. I then added a bat here in the foreground of our shot and it's just called bat. So I don't know if you can see this here guys, but I wanted to add the initial bat that he was referring to at the very beginning of the video. And this is the one part of the video that I wasn't super happy with, but I didn't wanna to spend too much time on this specific aspect of it. So as you can see here, this bat shape is just something that I've tracked into the shot. It's actually just a 2D image of a bat that I've adjusted the levels and color on. But you can see if I double click it, this is actually what I've added to the scene, just a very basic bat image and just overlaid that with the tracking data onto our shot. And then as you can see, if I go to effect controls, I've added a few effects to the bat. I'll go ahead and go through them one by one here. So as you can see, I have a very basic mask here to cut up the bottom portion, but I just wanted it to hang from the ceiling. So I've added a color range node to remove our white. Then I've added a refined soft matte to get a little bit better edges of our bat image. Then I've added some curves to darken it down a bit. Then I've added a tint effect that kind of tints it toward the color of our deep background. And as I mentioned in previous videos, it's super important to match the white and black levels of the elements that you're adding to the black and white levels in your live action shot. So I'm using how the shadows are lifted in the live action shot as reference to where the black level should be on our 2D bat image here. So that's what I've added this tint effect to help lift them a bit. And then I've also added some grain here. You can see if I just take away this grain, it's a much cleaner looking image that I'm adding. But since this is cell phone footage, you have a little bit of noise and actually some compression as well. So it's often important to try to match that. And one of the ways you can do that is just by adding a little grain effect to help dirty up that still image a bit. Then I've added a little uh, gradient ramp here to help blend it into the shot further. I don't know if it's super noticeable, but I just wanted to color correct our black levels so they weren't totally blending into the deep background here. And then finally, I've added some camera lens blur to match the blur of our shot as well, because obviously this deep background is a little bit more more blurry compared to the rest of the live action shot. So very simple compositing so far here, guys, just adding a few basic color correction and blur effects on top of this still frame of our hanging bat. And I really don't think this specific element is perfect. I think the perspective doesn't match the best. However, I thought it was good enough for the very few moments that it was in the shot. So I just decided to go with it from there. Anyways, after adding our still frame of the bat, it was time to add our other rendered elements into the scene. So the first element that I've added into the shot was our distant bats coming out of the back corner here. And it's pretty subtle, but you can kind of see when they fly out of the corridor here. I'll actually just maybe isolate these by themselves so we can see everything in its entirety. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So this was our 
Next element, as you can see, they're tracked into the shot fairly nicely. So this was the next element that I've added into the shot. So pretty uh, nice little track of these bats. You can see they fly out of that bat corridor. And I've done a variety of color correction techniques on this element as well. So go ahead and turn on our footage again so we can see it with everything. So here we have our bats in the background. And you can see I've added a variety of different effects here to blend it into the shot, very similar to our 2D bat element. So as you can see, this is our bat beauty render by itself here that I've added a tint effect to help again lift those black levels and just tint it toward the general color of our background. Then I've added some curves to help lift those shadows even further and just dial in those levels a bit more. Again, I've added a little bit of grain to the shot to make sure that that grain and compression matches the live action footage. And then I've added some camera lens blur to help blur it in and integrate it into the shot even further. And since our camera is moving so wildly, I found that this looked pretty good compared to the original element here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I've also enabled the motion blur checkbox here so that based on the tracking data, the bat element would have further motion blur applied to it as well based on how they move around the screen as they track around with that null object. So that helps to blend everything together as well. The next thing that I did was add our second bat element. So as you can see, I just labeled it as bats close. So you can see if I turn that on, this is the close up version of the bats coming right by the camera. So I just wanted to make it a little bit more chaotic as if there were bats coming from another area in the scene, just kind of filling up the environment. So as you can see, if we play through it real quick, we just get these bats flying right by the camera. So super simple addition here. I'm not even sure the track is perfect for this specific element, but since they're flying right by the camera, it doesn't need to be as perfect as the other one. And as you can see, I've added a variety of similar effects to this element as well. Go ahead and go through them one by one here. So this was our element by itself here. First, I have a tint effect that just lifts the black levels a bit to help integrate them into the shot a bit more. Then I've added some curves, again, to help lift those black levels a bit. I've added a little bit of grain there. You can see I've actually added a little bit of color, grain, and compression to this specific effect to help further integrate them. So you can see kind of the before and after there. I feel like that's really helping to match the compression of our live action shot as well. So keep that in mind when your element is too clean and your live action shot has a little bit of that compression, it can go a long way to add a little bit of grain or compression to the element that you're adding. And then finally, of course, I've added some lens blur, just three pixels here. And I may have added a little bit too much blur on this, but since the bats are going so fast by the camera it wasn't really that noticeable especially with all the other chaos going on and also just keep in mind that you know since the bats are moving so close to the camera they're moving so quickly across the frame that motion blur is going to be enhanced as well so i've also checked the motion blur checkbox uh, just like the other one so pretty simple little color adjustment there finally the next layer that i've added is a very simple singular bat hitting the camera so as you guys saw in the video one of the bats hits the camera and cracks the lens so that's what i've done here very simple overlay the bat just kind of almost like three or four frames here just the bat goes right and hits the camera I blurred this bat quite a bit and again added those same effects on top of it to help integrate it into the scene you can see before it's really uh, I think I've just actually scaled up that second element and chosen a specific moment where a bat flew right by the camera and then I just scaled it up you can actually see where you know the pixels are missing data so in order to get away with that of course I have to blur it further and uh, now we're good to go so really uh, a little cheap effect there but ended up working pretty good in my opinion again i've adjusted the tint and curves to help boost those black levels to help match it to the live action shot and then i've added some grain as well so this shot was really relying on kind of a found footage feel and kind of the dirtiness of the live action footage as if it's from a live stream or something like that so you're not going to be able to get away with a lot of these effects you know for a uh, very seamless integration within a shot that's very beautiful in a film but since the nature of the live action footage was uh how it was I was able to do some things that just dirtied it up even more so uh, yeah that was the next element that we added as you can see here just just kind of hits the camera super simple and then at that point of course we've added our glass break like so and I've actually used a very simple glass break image here and I've just overlaid that on top of our footage and enabled the blend mode as screen and added some camera lens blur to help blur it into the shot further and this glass break is super simple. I'll go ahead and show you guys it by itself here. So you can see it's actually animated to fade in from the center of the break. So I've just used a basic mask, which I've animated the expansion of. 
over two frames and then I've added a little camera lens blur to help blend it into the shot further. And obviously if you're filming from your iPhone, you wouldn't even get a glass break like this. This was more of a stylistic touch, but uh, yeah, thought it added to the impact of the shot. So decided to go for it. But super simple little glass break there. Then I've also added a digital glitch effect on top of everything. Right when that glass break occurs, kind of wanted it to feel like, you know, the camera or the phone was glitching a little bit. So I added a little digital glitch and chromatic aberration effect on top of everything. You can see there on top of our uh, glass break anyway. So I'll go ahead and enable everything at this point. We have our raw footage, distant bats, then our bat and cam, bats close. And yeah, now we're almost there. You can see that we have some chromatic aberration coming from our digital glitch there, which I've turned on at that specific moment based on the editing timeline here. And then I've also added a little bit of grain on top of everything just to help blend all of the different elements together. So that's a little trick you can do too. If there's a mixture of grain levels in the shot and your elements, you can overlay a little bit more grain to help kind of even everything out a bit. But yeah, I've had a little grain overlay there for a stylistic touch and to help blend everything together. And then finally, as you can see here, some final touches where I had a little foreground roto of our main character. You can see here if I turn it on and off, as some of our closer bats get by the camera, I actually wanted to make sure that our character here, Aaron, isn't uh, covered by those bats entirely. So just on a really basic, you know, garbage mat around Aaron. So as you can see here, let me just show you guys by itself here, you can see that now on these specific moments, the bats are not in front of him. Then as soon as it turns off here, now the bats can go in front of him, um, at least the close ones. So just a pretty basic composite here. Honestly guys, most of the work was just in matching the white and black levels of those CG bats elements from Blender. Um, a lot of this other stuff is just making it more stylistic, but again, kind of a fun little effect if you like kind of a found footage feel. But uh, yeah, that is how I created this visual effect shot with these bats. I hope this video was helpful. Let us know in the comment section below what you'd like to learn next on the channel. If you like these visual effects compositing walkthroughs, or if you'd like to see something else on the channel, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. So let us know in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video.